Today we're going to be looking at the quantization of light. So black body radiation is the electromagnetic radiation emitted by a black body at a constant temperature. A black body is an object that absorbs all of the radiation that comes into it, that is incident upon it, and emits radiation according to its temperature. Various black bodies include, or near black bodies include the stars. Every star is a near black body because it emits radiation at the temperature, according to the temperature that it's at. There are some um, objects on Earth that are close to black bodies. The, probably the best example is a kiln. A kiln uh, has, is an entirely enclosed um, object that heats up and emits radiation out of, out of, a, small, out of a small window. Um, and you can gauge the temperature that it's at based by the radiation that it is emitted by the kiln. Now, classical physics suggested that if you were observing a black body, the uh, radiation at different temperatures would, would increase indefinitely, the peak intensity, the total intensity, would increase indefinitely for, for the wavelength as you got further and further, um, as the wavelength reduced more and more, such that uh, at, the, at the very lowest wavelengths there would be a, a, a massive amount of ultraviolet radiation given off by a black body. Uh, it's probably good that that doesn't happen because otherwise the amount of UV radiation incident on the Earth that's being emitted from the sun would be massive and we would all crisp up, but what actually occurs is that the intensity of the black body radiation of the, of the different wavelengths for different temperatures drops off, drops off before, just before it gets to, or as it is getting into the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. So here we've got some different curves of different um, of objects at different temperatures. So here is a low temperature object, a moderately temperature object, and a higher temperature object. I've given them different colours based on the sort of um, colour of the spectrum they might be um, exhibiting. So this, the, the peak intensity of each of these you can see decreases, the, the peak intensity of the wavelength decreases as the temperature increases. So there's an inverse relationship with temperature. And that inverse relationship with temperature is called Wien, uh, Wien's Displacement Law, or Wien's Displacement Law. Um, and it's just, it relates to a constant um, divided by the temperature, the, the, wa the maximum wavelength, the peak wavelength at each of these points. And this, the, what this graph shows is that as the temperature increases, the peak wavelength might change, but there are still um, there, there are still a multiple number of wavelengths of light, of radiation, of black body radiation that are given off by a black body. So at this lower temperature, the, it might just be reaching the, this, this might be the uh, red part of the spectrum here with all of the rest of the colours over here, uh, and it, it is still emitting a small amount of, of radiation in the other colours, but overwhelmingly, the, the red, red colour is the uh, colour that's emitted most. So you can think about, um, if, you, if you're thinking about just one of the, one of the normal coil, electrical coil stoves that's heating up, as it, as it, heat, it's, it starts off as a relatively black colour, um, not emitting any radiation, but as it heats up, it glows, it starts to glow hot, and it'll start glowing a dull red, and then into a more orange, and then white, and, and the, the, as the temperature increases with stars, we see this as well. So the cooler stars are red coloured stars, and as the stars get hotter and hotter, they get whiter and whiter, and then even a, a little bit more blue. The reason that they go whiter and whiter and, and don't change the colours is because the, some of the colours are still represented. The peak here might be in the green part of the spectrum for this curve, but it also has some of the red over here and some of the blue. So it's getting all of the colours of the spectrum, so that's why it appears white. Um, just, just as we, if we shine white light through a prism, it's broken up into all of the colours of the rainbow. So, so all of the colours combine 
um, all of the intensities combined to give us a white light. So let's just have a look at some of those colours now, um, some of the colours, some, some of the radiation curves that might be given off by um, a, a black body. So let's have a look at if a human is a black body. Um, in, in reality, humans aren't black bodies because we don't absorb all of the, inf all of the radiation um, that, that comes into us. Some of the radiation is reflected off us um, and that's why we can see each other. We can see the radiation reflected off us. But if we said that a human is a black body um, and it, the, the temperature, the core temperature of the human was at 37 degrees Celsius, we can look at that. We can also look at a kiln, look at the peak temperature, um, the, sorry, the peak uh, uh, intensity of radiation, of wavelength of radiation given off by a kiln. And we can also look at our star, the sun. So let's have a look at the human first. We can, we've got Wien's displacement law here saying that the maximum, the peak wavelength given off um, just substituting into the equation. Now, um, all of the values that we need to use need to be SI units, and the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin, okay, is Kelvin. So to convert between degrees Celsius and Kelvin, we just need to add 273.15 degrees, uh, de or degrees onto our degrees Celsius to get, uh, get it in Kelvin. Um, so performing that calculation, we see that um, we get 9.3 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, which is in the infrared part of the spectrum. And that's why we, we get infrared cameras at work. Um, the infra infrared cameras work by just shifting the, what, we, uh, what we can see or what, what is interpreted, interprets the in infrared information that the camera receives and converts it to a visible image. And um, that's why humans can show up on infrared cameras because we're, we're emitting radiation in the infrared part of the spectrum. Looking at a kiln, a kiln not significantly different, just substituting in, into the equation once again, um, 800 degrees Celsius converting to Kelvin there and substituting it into our equation. It's not significantly different from uh, the wavelength that's given off by a human. Um, it's, it's not very many magnitudes greater. Uh, the peak radiation is still in the infrared, although it is getting closer. It's getting closer to the visible red part of the spectrum. And the reason we might be able to see the radiation given off by a kiln and not the radiation given off by a human is it because that, that curve, that the, the um, intensity of your radiation is still is, is being more emitted um, in the visible part of the spectrum. It is, it is different, it is, has started to shift. The peak is closer to the red part of the spectrum, the red part of the visible spectrum, and that's why we can see some of the intensity given off. If it got even hotter and hotter, it would get redder and redder as it pushed toward um, even further into the red part of the spectrum. And lastly, looking at the sun at 5,778 Kelvin, no need to uh, convert to Kelvin here. It's just put in at Kelvin, um, the Kelvin uh, unit. Um, and we can see that the lambda max for our, for our sun is actually in the visible spectrum. And it's at the peak, the peak is in the green part of the spectrum. But once again, you know, we, we, look, we look at the sun and it's, it's not green. Uh, and the reason for this is because that's just where the peak of the spectrum is. The, the, there is still radiation and being emitted in all parts of the visible colours of the spectrum. And that's why the star appear, uh, our star, the sun, appears white. The radiation, the, the light coming from the sun, appears white to us. So uh, the German physicist Max Planck, he hypothesised that black body radiation is, is caused by the oscillation, the actual vibration uh, of atoms, of atoms in the black body. And that the amount of energy that's emitted, so given off or, or absorbed, taken in by the black body, changes the quantum state of the oscillator by a discrete value, a certain amount. The quantum state just refers to the uh, state of vibration that, that, uh, that the oscillator is in. So the, um, the amount, um, the ex to the, the extent 
that the oscillator is vibrating and we can increase the the quantum state change the quantum state um, by this discrete value this is um, Planck's equation um, E equals HF uh, where N E is energy here uh, H is Planck's constant um, and the values of those are given here and F is the frequency of vibration of the oscillation um, so a discrete value means that it it's not continuous so it can only be a certain amount of energy um, for, the f for, the, for a particular frequency of oscillation so if we want to change the os oscillation um, the, 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 uh, the, the quantum state of the, our oscillator we can add energy in or, or energy can be given off by that quantum oscillator but it will always increase or decrease by this amount HF um, this is the quantization the, the, the discrete quantum of, of energy that we can get by changing um, by, by uh, having uh, uh, energy incident like giving energy to the oscillator or taking energy or, or having energy given off by the oscillator and it will always increase or decrease by the amount HF depending on the frequency and this this can this diagram can go up and up forever so if this is our um, our oscillator that's oscillating at, at our, our frequency F the amount of energy that, that that oscillator will have depends on this N here this N is the quantum is the quantum number that shows the quantum state that it's in so the zero quantum state it won't have any any energy um, and at the one the uh, first quantum state one um, it will have the energy HF at 2, 2 HF until it goes all, all the way up to N HF um, so whatever quantum value it's at but we, uh, any amount of energy that's given off or absorbed will be equal to HF be equal to HF of this oscillator so the oscillator could be, could be an atom the oscillator could be a photon a photon is a, a discrete packet of energy uh, a a discrete amount of light that exists as a particle, a particle of light that can uh, be transmitted through space, it can be absorbed, uh, the energy of that photon can be absorbed as well and energy can be given off as a photon as part of as part of visible light, infrared, an infrared photon, ultraviolet photon, a gamma photon, any type, any, any, any uh, from any frequency in the electromagnetic spectrum but it just and the, the value that that energy has the amount of energy that that photon has that, that packet of energy has depends on its frequency depends on its frequency and we'll have a look at that in some examples in a second just um, noting here the units in joules seconds uh, the the units for Planck's constant here is, is this and uh, the, the uh, units in electron volt seconds the conversion between those is just multiplying by the charge on an electron um, multiplying by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 uh, joules to convert between those two often if we're talking about a single photon a single oscillator we'll use the electron volts constant because it it gives a uh, an, an easier number to work with an easier value a more relatable value so looking at some examples of um, of the energy of photons and how they oscillate remember a photon is just a packet of energy that can be emitted or absorbed by a black body or, or, any, or um, anything in, in fact uh, so the photon could be um, for example a gamma photon and the gamma photon could be given off by um, radioactive decay or it could be given off by a star um, it can be given off um, using, using a, gamma, a gamma ray generator um, we can and, and the frequency that we're going to look at is about 10 to the 19 hertz a very high frequency you can see there um, the, a TV signal op operates at a lower frequency a lower frequency of about 10 to the 8 hertz and we can even look at um, a wavelength of red light so a photon of red light 
Notice the difference between these two here. We've got um, the, the, the gamma frequency is much higher um, than the TV signal. We would expect then that the energy of the gamma photon to be higher because uh, uh, Planck's equation there, E equals HF, shows that if in frequency increases, then energy must increase as well. So if we have our E equals HF here and we substitute in our 10 to the 19 hertz frequency into our equation using the uh, electron volt seconds value for Planck's constant here, we get uh, a quite a large value of energy, 4.14 times 10 to the positive 4 uh, electron volts. Comparing that to what we receive if we input um, our, our TV signal frequency in here, 10 to the 8 hertz, we can see that this is many, many, many times uh, less. So the energy for our TV signal is in fact uh, lower. Now, if we've got um, a wavelength here, not a, not a frequency, we just need to remember our conversion between frequency and, uh, and, and wavelength. And the relationship between frequency and wavelength through the speed of light is uh, C is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Okay, so if we wanted to find what the frequency, uh, sorry, we wanted to find, yeah, we wanted to find what the frequency is, the frequency is going to be equal to the speed of light C divided by the wavelength. The frequency will be equal to C divided by the wavelength. There. So I've input this value for frequency C on wavelength into our equation to get a, uh, E equals HC on lambda. We can substitute those values in there. Once again, um, H in there, um, C, the value for C is um, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second, and our wavelength is 700 nanometres, 700 times 10 to the negative 9, and that yields about 1.8 electron volts. So that's the value we get for our uh, wavelength of light. And you can see this, is, this value, 1.8 electron volts, is in between um, our TV signal energy and our gamma, gamma radiation energy.